<coughs> Hello, everybody. Reverend Dr. Red here. Now, what I want to get across to everybody is that we have more power and more abilities <coughs> than the normal individual likes to uh, believe we have. And that could be a major problem. Because you see, aside from the fact that everything was already pre-written and everything's going to happen the way it was meant to happen, the way, you know, God intended for it to happen, aside from all that, we do have the ability, we do have the powers to change things. A lot of people, uh, particularly nowadays, don't seem to realize how much power we really have. Whether you want to blame that on the fact that everybody was dumbed down uh, due to the um, drugging up of America <coughs> and Western nations between, you know, the Ritalin and Prozac and other drugs like that and all the fluoride and, and our water and foods and all the chemicals we're breathing in from the chemtrails. Or if you want to blame it on the mere fact of society, because everybody's trying to say that we're post-Christian, or we're post-modern, <clears throat> you know, all, all these different things that, you know, trying to suggest that a lot of what happened back in biblical times was all mere fairy tales and folklore. And, and a lot of people are suggesting that to, 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 to still believe in any of these things is childish, uh, and mere superstition. Uh, all, all this was made up for the benefit of the people of those times because they had a lack of understanding. Well, I'm going to say that it is people today that have the lack of understanding, um, <clears throat> especially considering the fact that how many different sects of Christianity are there and how many different sects of Judaism are there? How many people realize that Christianity is a sect of Judaism? How many people realize that it was the Pharisaical Jews that first coined the phrase Christian more than a hundred years after Jesus' death to separate Christ's followers from themselves? How many people realize that in the destruction of the temple in 70 AD, the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD, the majority of the sects of Judaism will diminish? They collapse. The only... <coughs> remaining sects of Judaism that remained uh, after the fall of Jerusalem in 70 AD was the Pharisaical Judaism, which became today's rabbinical Judaism, and of course you have different sects of Judaism between the Messianic Jews, the Orthodox Jews, etc. and so on, and Christianity, which obviously you have different sects of Christianity being that of the uh, Orthodox Christians, the uh, root form Christianity, uh, the Catholic, all the different Protestant faiths, etc., and so on. But at the initial fall of Jerusalem, all the different sects of Judaism fell except for two, being Pharisaical Judaism and Christianity. Now, how many people understand that? Or how many people know that? They don't. Why? Because that knowledge is kept from us. The knowledge is uh, not meant for the people to what you know, because knowledge is power, and the, the, those who are controlling the world don't want us to have the power, because they fear that if we know the power that we have, or if we have the knowledge that they have, we will be able to use it against them, and that is exactly what I'm trying to get across to you now in this video, that we do have the power, we can stop a lot of what's going on in this world. Each and every one of us, see, people just want to misinterpret what Bible prophecy states. Yes, things are as prophecy states have to happen uh, as it is stated that it can happen, but we are not to sit back and do nothing. We all have a part to play in this, and we are all to do our part, whether we do it willingly or we do it, you know, against our will, where without us knowing about it, God is going to move us along to do whatever it is our task is that He sent, that He has for us. Um, 
after you know trying numerous different businesses and numerous different career paths, obviously you know I wound up in in uh, Minnesota. I'm not going to get into that story though. That that's in uh, very first two videos, in my introduction videos on YouTube as well as on thisinsomnews.org uh, and RevenDoctor.com. I have in in text format how I wound up becoming a minister and you know, why becoming a minister was really the last thing from my uh, mind of doing pretty much up until it happened. Um, getting back to the point, <coughs> what, what they don't want us to know, <coughs> okay, and the reason why Judaism and Christianity all over the world <coughs> and now coming to America is being persecuted against and they're trying to get rid of Judaism and Christianity it's because we are the religions of light. We can shed light into their darkness. And that has been proven scientifically that people who have a high amount of faith in God have more hyperactivity going on in the brain than those who do not believe in God. So now, if, if more of our brain is active, because we have a little bit of faith in God, you know that's just, that. You know what else could are we would be that now be capable of? Especially considering the average human in today's time era only uses approximately ten percent of the brain. And so obviously we're capable of more than what it is we are, you know, doing on a day to day basis that we're used to doing. We are capable of more, of more than just you know, things in the physical uh, realm. And as far as prayer is concerned, because um, that's where I'm going here, prayer is the most powerful tool. I know some of you are not going to be believing me because not everybody that watches my videos is a Christian or uh, believes in root form Christianity, which is what it is that I preach, because I don't believe in, in this paganistic Christianity of the mainstream. But if you go to Mark 11, verse 23 to 24, <clears throat> Jesus says, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. In other words, <coughs> if you pray for something, <coughs> you will have it. It's yours. You have the capability to achieve anything, to have anything you want through prayer. Now, where a lot of people get messed up with this is they figure, well, okay, I'm going to pray. Uh, you know, uh, everybody says do in the name of Jesus, so I'm going to pray in the name of Jesus. And they're going to pray for a material item or they're going to pray for a lot of money or whatever. Maybe, maybe they have... A, that they're sick and they're trying to cure themselves of cancer by praying. And it doesn't work. And then they're going to say, well, I prayed, I don't have my, my material item, I don't have my money, or I still have my disease. Well, that's because you don't have the faith. See, Jesus says that if you have the faith just the size of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. As it says in uh, Matthew 17:20. Um, be, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, nothing shall be impossible unto you. So if you have just a little bit of faith, the size of a mustard seed, you can literally move mountains. So, I'm going to tell you that if you prayed for something and you didn't get it, it's because you don't have enough faith. Or if you want to believe you have the faith, 
Well, when you miss the sign, if you, if you pray for a material item or you pray for a lot of money or whatever, it's not just going to pull out of the sky and, and land on the table or land, you know, on your property or whatever. <clears throat> you have to watch for your answers. The signs are going to be there, and you got to follow the signs to get whatever it is that you're looking for. There is a little bit of work involved. <coughs> Now, just to further prove my point, we're going to now go to Matthew uh, 14, 22 to 31, where it says, And straightway Jesus uh, constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain of heart to pray. And when the evening was, co was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It, it is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. <laughs> but... Straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him, and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Okay? Peter was walking on the water. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand, and caught him, and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Do you understand what happened there? Through faith, Peter was able to walk on the water to Jesus. When he began to be overcome by fear, he began to sink into the water. So you see, if we have faith, a little bit of faith, literally nothing is impossible to us. Now this is what I'm going to suggest. It's really clear to everybody in America right now that unlike what the mainstream media is reporting, we're not in a recession, we're in all in, in all out depression. The economy is at an all out standstill. It's getting worse by the day. Small businesses are going out of business. A lot of companies are refusing to hire because of the uncertainties under Obama. And the unemployment rate is continuing to climb. They're falsifying numbers because people are either refusing to continue looking for, job, for jobs or, and or they're falling off the unemployment rolls. That, that doesn't even necessarily you know, count as, well, unemployment is going down. All that means is that there's less people being counted. Unemployment is going up. So, you know, it's no secret to everybody, to anybody in America that America is a disaster right now. We need to fix America. And as I said in previous videos, one step to fixing America is to vote Romney into office. Get Obama out of there. But one of the major problems is the fact that, there, that God is literally being pushed out of America. America as a whole is telling God, we don't want you here. Leave. And God is listening because we have free will. We have the option to do whatever we want. Whatever we want. God is not going to push himself on us. Okay? You need to understand that. God is not going to push himself on us. It's up to us to ask to, to, uh, to be in God's family. If we respect God as our Father, and we ask God to watch over us, and we ask God to help us, then God will watch over us and will help us and will guide us through our daily lives. And if we tell God 
we don't want you, leave, God will do just that and he will leave. He's not going to bother us. And that's exactly what's going on. Over the past couple of decades, we have been asking God to leave as a whole. And he has been. And the more we push God out of our nation, the worse America gets. So, this is what I'm, what I'm going to suggest, I want everybody to do. I'm not going to say set a date yet, because I want everybody to email me at Reverend Dr. Red at gmail.com. You can go to reverenddrred.com or spiritualmessiahministries.org to get my email address. You can either email me at that one or you can email me at reverendwconrad at aol.com or email the ministry at spiritualmessiahministries at gmail.com. Again, the old email addresses are on reverenddrred.com and spiritualmessiahministries.org. I want you to email us um, and when I get enough responses, I'll then email everybody out a date and a time that we're going to do this. And, you know, we'll do what we have to do online as far as getting an events page up and everything where people can communicate with one another and help get this spread out that way. But right now, I just want to see how many people are willing to try this out with me. And, you know, the first, couple, the first few people that send me an email, I'll, you know, we'll, we'll have an email correspondence back and forth to figure out how we're gonna, what we're going to do to really get this movement going and get this out there to the people and try to get a, a page set up on the internet uh, to, so everybody can talk to everybody there and we can figure out what we're going to do amongst all of us. But, so the, anyways, the key thing to fixing America really would be to invite God back into America. There's a lot of people in America that have either A, turned away from God, or B, have never known God. As sad as that is, there are people in America that have never known God. They have never heard the gospel, they have never set foot in a church. They don't know God. They have never known God. And there are many, many others that do know God, that have met God, that turn their backs on God. So this is what, what, I, what I'm proposing. I want people to go to reverendnotherred.com and spiritualmessiahministries.org and I want you to email us whether or not you think this is a good idea and if you'll participate in it with us and if you'll help us get the word out to, out to everybody. But I want to set a date and a time where all the Christians in America at the same exact moment are going to pray in Jesus' name that America will turn back to God. And all those in America that don't know God will get to know God and learn of God and start walking uh, with God in their daily lives. I truly believe that if we do this, and America as a whole returns to God, our nation will now turn around and go back to the greatness that she once was. The economy booming, everybody working, American exceptionalism, the American spirit, everything. No more socialism, no, uh, no more unemployment rates as high as it is. No, you know, all the problems that we're going through today will be gone because now we're going back to God as our founding fathers uh, originally wanted for us and originally established this country on Christian values and Christian morals. And my, my proposition is that we have a day of prayer where all the Christians in America, at the same moment, on the same day, pray for this to happen. Because, if you think about it, if just one individual, if just you alone, with the faith of a mustard seed, 
can literally pluck a mountain off of where it sits and move it somewhere else. And then if you get all the Christians in America to pray for the same thing at the same time, where we all feel in our heart, we all really want this, and we all have the faith, then, and if one of us can move a mountain singly, then together we should be able to move America. And that's what my goal is, to move America. To move America back to God, and to bring America back to the greatness that she once was. No more crime, no more race riots, no more uh, racism, to the, especially not to the extent that it is today. No more unemployment, high unemployment rates. No more financial and economical uncertainties. You know, back to the time when we were stable, we had a powerful military, and we didn't take anything from any body or any other nation. They tried messing with us, and we pretty much handed it back to them. People feared us because we had God on our side. And I believe that we can get that back. But in order to get that back, we kind of need God. We need God back in America. We need America back with God. So after my proposition is, and all the Christians in America on the same day, at the same time, without a doubt in our minds, just all our faith, you know, the faith in Christ that you know, that this will happen. We pray that everybody who turns from God turns back to God, and everyone in America who has not yet met God will now get to know God, and will now start start walking their daily lives with God. So please go to reverenddrred.com and spiritualsideministries.org and give myself personally for the ministry an email let us know what you think about about the idea. And if enough people can th think it's worth a shot, you know, see if we can, if we can pull this off, then we'll work with all of you out there who thinks we can, you know, manage to pull this off to set up an exact date and time. Uh, get a, get a page up there on the internet to help promote it. And you know we'll we'll, uh, we'll get a, a a prayer together, and on on whatever day, whatever time it is that we that we decide on, we will do this. And I believe that it will work. But all of the Christians in America, across the denominational lines, need to come together to do this. We need to pray together for this. We need to let God know that just because the government, and just because the secularists in this country don't want him here, that we do. We need to let God know that we want God back in America. And I really do feel that if we come together collectively and we all pray at the, on, at the same time, on the same day. God will hear this big shout coming out of America, begging for him to come back to America. And he will listen. He will come back. That is what I truly believe. Because Jesus does not turn his back on his brethren. The Father does not, will not turn his back on his children. If we ask him for help, if we ask him to come back and help us out, he will. But we need to let him know that we want his help. We need to let him know that we want him to come back to America. 
So give me in the minute or the ministry an email. Let us know what you think of the idea, and let's get this going. Let's get a date and, and a time picked out, and let's get this prayer going. Let's get God back in America. America back to God. And let's show the world that not only is God real, and not only will God stand by His people, but everything that the prophets and the ancient Christians did throughout time wasn't folklore and fairy tales. It's all true. And we still have the ability. Why do we have the ability? Because Jesus gave it to us via the Holy Spirit. If you have the Holy Spirit in your heart, you have the ability. If you have faith in Christ, you have the ability. We have the power. We have the power to change America and to change the world. We have the power to bring peace and to bring unity to this world. So let's do it, starting with America. The emails are, on, are at reverendnothingred.com, spiritualmessiahministries.org. There's two separate emails that come to me personally, and then there's the ministry's email. Give us an email, let us know what you think, and let's get this, let's get this going. Like I said, I'm not going to pick out a date or time yet until I see how big this is going to be. I want all of you to help me determine what the prayer is going to be and what day and time we're going to do this. I want all of you to help to help me and Christian Sun Ministries determine that. The bigger the response, obviously, the sooner we can do it, because I want as many Christians to involved in this as possible. The louder our voice is, the, the quicker the response will be. That being said, please give us an email. Let us know what you think. Spread this video. Spread the word. And let's get this, let's get this going. It's up to you now. I, I gave you an idea. Now it's up to all of you to to, uh, to either make this idea happen and better America and the world, or just let the idea kind of fall to the wayside. It's all up to you. How much faith do you have? Do you have enough faith in Jesus that if we ask him to help us restore America, that, that he will listen and help us restore America? If you have faith in Jesus, respond to us via email, spread this video, and let's get this ball on the road. If you don't believe Jesus will respond to our prayer and help us, then you don't have faith in Jesus at all. It's that simple. So, all you Christians out there, get in touch with me and the ministry via email. Spread the word. And let's get a date and a time chosen for this uh, nationwide day of prayer to restore America. I know it's been tried in the past, and the only reason why it hasn't worked, in my opinion, is because people that have tried this in the past, to my knowledge, have all been in, have all been multi-faith, interfaith. So you have this crowd praying to Jesus, this crowd praying to Buddha, you know. And there's only one true God. 
which is why I'm directing this video and this prayer strictly to the Christians. We're going to pray, in, we're going to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. We have to have the faith. Obviously, somebody who believes in another faith is not going to have the faith in Jesus Christ. You know, you got to have faith in Jesus Christ for, for, for this prayer, or any prayer, to, to, to really work. If you don't have the faith, the, the words are meaningless. you got to have the faith. But we do have the power. Through our faith in Jesus, we have the power. Now, it is up to all of you to prove to the world that we have the power and that we are going to restore America with the help of Jesus. Because He will respond to us. We just got to ask Him. That being said, I don't want to repeat myself about emailing myself in the ministry or uh, if I have to spread this video, so I'm not going to repeat that again. So, I'll, so I'm going to thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. Uh, again, the websites are ReverendDrRed.com and SpiritualMessiahMinistry.org. Uh, God bless.